Hello everyone, welcome to the YouTube channel of Dr. Amit's Biochemistry and this is the fourth video of the immunology series uh, which is taken up by me, Anandita Jha. I am currently pursuing my PhD. Uh, now, uh, make sure to watch all the, th those videos which is available on this channel, right? Uh, there we have discussed about cells and organs of immune system, uh, about APCs, classification of cells, etc., right? Now, today we will just see component of abuse system. Uh, component means, see, uh, there is two kind of thing I have separated. First is uh, the defense mechanism itself, which is the immune system and something which is foreign, right, foreign. What we say antigen. Here I will uh, we'll be using the term antigen. But see, antigen is not always used for the foreign kind of thing, right. Antigen means, anti means uh, something which is uh, different from what is uh, persisting, right, in the host or ho different from host. Or the technical meaning we can say something which can generate the antibody, right, antibody in our immune system. Uh, but they can be classified in two ways. First, uh, two ways means you, we can have one which is very foreign kind of approach. Second is host approach, right. In the uh, host kind of approach, we will see first this, we have self antigen, example is HLA, right, human leukocyte antigen, I think a brief idea about it you might ha be having, then is non-self or foreign antigen, right. This non-self or foreign antigen uh, can be class further classified as uh, LO antigen, ISO antigen, hetero antigen, right. So this uh, LO antigen is a species specific. ISO antigen is a subset like blood group antigen what we say. Uh, hetero antigen is uh, two, uh, found in two different species, right. Achha, one, thing, one thing is there, this host kind of uh, relation uh, what I have written here is with host relation. So this shouldn't be confused with that of the autoimmunity, right. Because they are, these antigens are host antigen which is uh, being tolerated by the immune system itself, right. Then we have pathway of activating immune arms antigen on the basis of pathway of activating the immune arm how they are activating so first is t cell dependent and second is the t cell independent right uh, what are the various example we'll see it later right see one thing give an integrated approach about uh, immunology right uh, we can't separate innate arm or adaptive arm or study it separately no uh, why I am saying this? Because the innate or adaptive both persist in the similar body, in the same body, right? So, this defense mechanism, they are the pathway, means innate is activating adaptive immune system and adaptive in turn is activating the innate immune system. So, here we see a bigger picture, what it is states is, just see the figure, uh, it is just a depiction, uh, first suppose this is the skin cells, okay? And here is a bacteria with a red flag in his hand, he is just going to conquer the body. Now he entered. Somehow he entered by breaching the first line of defense, right? So uh, what he did is he just first encountered the cells, right? Uh, like uh, dendritic cells are there, macrophages are there, different kinds of cells are there. So they'll just encounter them, this bacteria, right? Now some part of bacteria will be caught up by antigen presenting cells. These are antigen presenting cells like mac macrophage, right? Then what would happen, this is the classic pathway I am telling about, this uh, part of the bacteria, maybe some carbohydrate part or protein part or anything will be presented here as the name suggests antigen presenting cell. So they are the presenters, they will just present, okay. Now see, then certain signal will uh, just uh, forget about IL-12 or anything, interleukins or various, we will just see it later on very clearly what are the various interleukins. They will just, uh, uh, one thing you have to remember, certain signals are there, they will activate T cell, right? This T cell is naive T cell, naive means someone who does not, does not know about their function, naive what we say, right? They will activate two paths, certain uh, interleukins, maybe interleukin 4 or interleukin 5. So, two kinds of responses will generate. One is cytotoxic. Cytotoxic response means uh, certain types of granzymes 
or porphyrins different kinds of enzymes are there or this is killing kind of mechanism right and this is um uh, arms kind of mechanism they'll just uh, have certain kinds of uh, anti they'll secrete antibodies so humoral response and cytotoxic response two things will happen see what i want to see here is this apc will present okay the antigen and further two pathways can be activated first is humoral or and second is the cytotoxic see the one antigen which is activating this t cell and then further humoral response will happen they are antigen t cell dependent one first they'll activate t cell then they'll activate b cell right activation of b cell is humoral response then only it will convert to plasma cell and further secrete uh, antibodies right so they are two types see antigen can be protein can be carbohydrate can be nucleic acid right remember one thing for suppose this is innate wing this is adaptive wing not suppose this is actually here is a bridge what is the bridge between both these apcs antigen presenting cells are the bridge between both right they will just link up and just exchange the things from adaptive to innate and innate to adaptive now see uh, here i have classified so we have carbohydrate polysaccharide and lps listen anything which is having uh, multiple uh, like uh, factors okay like polysaccharides okay uh, sugar containing things uh, lps uh, lipopolysaccharides from gram negative bacteria mostly so they can directly activate humoral response or directly activate b cell so that's why it is t cell independent response okay so you have one question here which can act as t cell independent antigen the options are gram positive bacteria second is gram negative bacteria do comment in the comment section below and now from the last video there was a question right uh, i have thought to discuss it here the question was can gad65 used as uh, to treat diabetes right so first understand what is gad65 it is glutamic acid decarboxylase 65 65 is kilo dalton the weight actually of the protein right see what was the main thing it was actually used as marker in central nervous system uh, diseases right uh, recent uh, before uh, this new discoveries it was believed that it is something which is patented to <laughs> neurons right but now it is found that these are present in non neurological cells also like pancreatic cells or any other cells they require certain kind of co uh, cofactors like vitamin b6 just see their presence their presence can demonstrate the functioning or the biochemical pathways okay which is going on see they are actually the markers so whether the demonstration or administration of insulin is going on uh, smoothly or not they can mark these things so now it recently it has been used for diabetes but insulitis uh, is seen some sort of infection so the thing is actually failed not working properly but research is going on uh, i would appreciate this question and that somebody have asked this so you can refer the research paper link i am going to put in the description box so you can refer that and see what are the functions are there it is uh, explained nicely and you can also refer science direct okay so that's all thanks for the patient listening thank you